Yeah, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good night, and depending from where in the world you're tuned in to today's webinar. Um, yeah, welcome to our webinar, not just webinar, to our part of our webinar series about digital manufacturing, about how integrated tool data management can be your boost for productivity. And yeah, as you can see today, it's about digital manufacturing, CAD CAM and tool data management. Today, it's all about the digital twin. It's, 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 it's about, yeah, let's, let's talk about digitizing tools with TDM know-how, creating and managing uh, this uh, digital twin. Talk about CAD CAM interfaces and how this all affects or actually improves the digital manufacturing process, like an optimized process, cost and time savings in planning, in programming, and of course, also um, on the shop floor. But first, let's do a, a teeny tiny bit of housekeeping, um, something organizational real quick, um, as we have quite a few attendees uh, tonight, which is super nice. Thank you for that. Um, you're all muted because it's not that easy to, if everybody talks at the same time. What we're going to do is, uh, I will stay uh, in the webinar at the end, so there's there's time for questions. You can you can ask questions in the uh, in the question window, and I will try to answer all of them at the end. If I cannot answer all of them today, then definitely we're going to do this per email and no worries. Every question will be answered. So, and now let's uh, introduce myself real quick. My name is Robert Auer and let me turn on the web camera just for a brief second. So, you know, this is live. If it works, yes, here I am. <laughs> a little bit surprised. Yeah, my name is uh, Robert Auer, Director of Global Business Development at TDM Systems. I'm a software engineer by trade, and I did spend most of my professional career, actually all of my professional career, in the manufacturing industry, um, dedicated to tool management at least for the last 10 years. My background is quite international. Um, I did work and live in the United States, and over the years I was responsible for several European markets, China, India, Southeast Asia. But as most of you, I am stranded at home right now, and and to be honest, it could be worse because home for me means uh, southern Germany, Lake Constance. And like in the recent webinars, let's do a little weather reports. If I look outside the window, I can see the lake. It was actually for the last webinars, it was sunshine. Today, it's a little bit cloudy. It's uh, gray and rainy, but I mean, nature needs a little rain, so that's okay. Yo, and I'm going to turn off the camera again to save some bandwidth. And uh, before we start with the webinar, um, I want to answer a question which came up in the in recent webinars. Actually, uh, an easy one. Who is TDM? Uh, I want to give you a brief introduction who TDM actually is. TDM Systems is the leading software provider for managing tool data in the metal cutting industry. We are headquartered in Tübingen, southern Germany. It's south of Stuttgart, which you might know, and it's north of my home office, actually. Um, we, have a, we have a subsidiary in, in Schaumburg, close to Chicago, and we have sales and service locations and partners around the world. We are a member of the Sandvik Group, which means we have a strong company in the back, and it also gives us access to yeah, know-how of internationally leading tool manufacturers. However, it's really important to point out that TDM is I think nowadays you call this agnostic. We're, we're an open software. Of course, we do not only manage Sandwick tools, we, we manage tools, period. I mean, we even create the tool catalog data for, 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 for some of Sandwick's competitors in the market. And I think this independence or independence in general openness is definitely key in digital manufacturing. And in this spirit, the spirit of openness, I don't see this webinar as a product presentation, but more about tool management in general, what tool, state of the art uh, tool management is and what tool management can do for you. So now without further ado, live from my home office at beautiful Lake Constance, I would say sit back, relax, and let's talk about, let's talk about CAD CAM and tool data management. A little recap, what happened last time, we talked about what is tool management. In a nutshell, tool management is about having the right tools, right time, right place, and of course, with the right data, the right data quality. Uh, a basic tool management system manages items with all their parameters like dimensions, but also things like, uh, I don't know, article number, price, and so on and so forth. Those items are used in tool assemblies. And those tool assemblies are part of jobs in order to manufacture something. And this manufacturing library provides now information, for example, to the CAM programmer, um, 
to the POC for a CAM programmer, it provides, for example, parameters like speeds, feeds, or historical information. How did that tool perform in the past? Um, is the component or the tool assembly actually available, or do we have to reorder it? And this, of course, optimizes the, the entire process. And you, you, of course, the error rate through reliable tool data, you reduce variety, you're better organized, you have a transparent process. And in the end of the day, you save costs and time with an easy, transparent tool selection. And, and of course, you have an update, up-to-date, centrally maintained database with tool data. And of course, aside from the, the programming planning department, uh, you create, manage everything, let's, yeah, let's call it downstream from the planning. So for, for job planning, manufacturing management, you have you have your, your jobs with the, the, the tool assemblies, with the bill of material, with the tool location, um, you have all the, the, the necessary documents, gauges, fixtures, everything you need for, for job planning and manufacturing. And then, of course, smart manufacturing, industry 4.0, we talk about uh, big data. You can also visualize, analyze, and work with the data you collect, like tool life, how do the tools perform, usage of tools, the quality of your vendors, things like that. That's all uh, possible, and this is all done by managing the so-called digital twin. You all know the physical tool, the tool you cut metal with, the cool tool you make money with. When we talk about tool data management, we really talk about the digital twin. And also the digital twin has certain parameters. It has a length, it has a diameter, maybe a weight and things like that. But it is so much, so, so much more. And depending on, on, on the other system we're talking to, it is, we're talking about different uh, parameters. Okay. Today, the job of a tool data management system is providing and collecting digital data along the entire, basically end-to-end -end process uh, in, in a manufacturing in a manufacturing world. And this is just just an example of this process, and you can see there are many different systems. Let me switch the pointer here real quick. You have a product lifecycle management, CAD systems. You manage your fixtures. You have an ERP system, for example, and the ERP system needs an article number, a price tag, a vendor. One example for a digital twin, a CAM system, what we'll talk in a second, needs 2D, 3D data. A presetter needs um, dimensions with tolerance, as a, a, a nominal length, nominal diameter, and a tolerance for it. A machine tool is interested in the offsets and maybe a tool life. So as you can see, different systems, different data, and uh, central tool database management uh, the, the makes sure that we provide that data to the different systems with interfaces. Today, of course, in the end of the day, we just talk about this little part here, CAM, programming, planning. But this little part here has a huge impact. First of all, you only use items or tools which are verified, which are either available or you know what it takes to get them. You have historical information on them. It's easy to assemble the, 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 the assemblies. Create a digital twin. And when you're done with your programming, you save the job and you automatically create all the necessary information for the rest of the uh, manufacturing process, like uh, um, a bill of material with with stock location to get stuff out of your vending systems. You get an assembly drawing for, for all the tool assemblies. You get, of course, the parameters for your presetters and so on and so forth. I mean, this is not a complete picture, uh, but I think you get you get the point. So what do we do now? Let's zoom into this area, the planning area. And what you see here is, of course, again, the tool data management software, the, the, the database in the center. And what you do here, you manage, this is kind of your, your basic knowledge base. You manage the, the, the tool library, the components, the assemblies, the jobs. You have a document management. You manage your NC programs, fixtures, gauges. It is your, 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 your knowledge base, your single source of truth. And of course, as a CAM programmer, you have access to that database. Through a, through a plugin in your CAM software, you have access to this knowledge base. So all the information you need is basically always just a mouse click away. And during that planning process, you automatically create all the necessary shop, shop floor documentation, like job sheets, bill of material. Um, in the bill of material, you have all the components, components with stock locations, components with quantity, and so on and so forth. And of course, you have the assembly drawing for the, 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 the people assembling the tools, and you have the data for the presetter, which can then be automatically transferred to the presetter. The nominal data, the tolerances, that's all prepared here in the planning phase of your, of your job. And of course, the basis for for this uh, for for this all is the tool data. And it's of course important to know or to see how you get this data into the system. And in TDM, we have plenty of tools to create 
yeah, to create a digital twin with a couple of clicks. I always call this a, a CAM system for tools. Um, but because this is this webinar is really about programming CAD CAM, please allow me a little detour and let's talk about how or where actually this tool data also can come from. So there are many, many ways to get data into the system. You can import it from Excel, but it's really, or create it from scratch, but it's really important. You can only import um, what you get from your source. So basically you cannot create data from thin air. So out of an Excel sheet, you only can, can get that much information. The rest you will have to add manually. So a better option is of course, to use um, the source from a, from, a, from a tool vendor. So this is something we can, we can either download or we have an interface directly to, to the source of, of a tool vendor, or we actually have the catalog on board. And of course we have interfaces to, to online platforms such as Tools United and Machining Cloud. And on top of that, because we know the data is only as good as the source, we have our own um, web item data graphic generator. We have our own tooling cloud where we have verified data and we make sure that the data you download from our own um, web platform can be used right away in different systems, like in different CAM systems. And then last but not least, of course, we have tools on board to create tools from scratch. We have tools to modify that data. Um, and we have tools on board to validate the data, to make sure the, the data you have in the system is compliant with the different um, applications you have interfaces to. And then last but not least, we also have a data service team. Their job is twofold. One job is they help um, OEMs, like the, the tool manufacturers you can see on this page, to create their digital tool data. And they uh, also offer the same service to our end customers. So if you uh, looking into a tool management system, of course you can buy the software, but at one point you have to get this data into the system and uh, we help you with that. Our tool data service team helps you with doing just that. So that was kind of a, uh, uh, an introduction in what, what, what uh, a tool data management does, how we create uh, the tool data, how we use the tool data, where you can get tool data from. Now let's have a quick look into actually the system. Let's go into a live demo and show you how we work with the tool data. I have to switch the screen here real quick. So what you will see in a second, yeah, that's kind of the, the home screen of, 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 our soft, of our software called TDM Global Line. It's the home screen, of course you can customize it. So if you have a different user role, you can change the layout, but you can see something what I said a couple times already, we manage items, components, we manage the assemblies, and we manage the tool list, plus a couple other things. Let's have a look at the uh, at the tool item level. <clears throat> of course, you have a Google-like search. You can search for, for, for items. You have filters if you want to search for certain parameters, or if you have a certain operation, you can look for technology, for suppliers, and so on and so forth. So there's, a, there's, a, there's a very uh, powerful search function, and you uh, select your, your tool, your component, and you have all the information right here. You have a 2D graphic, a 3D graphic, and of course the, the, the necessary information and parameters about that tool. We have, a, uh, we have information about the stock location. Like here you can see this, uh, this component is available in actually in two places. One has 30 new ones and 40, uh, 31 new ones, 41 used. I mean, this is clearly a demo. <laughs> um, yeah, basically you, have, you know if it's available, and of course, you know the vendor, delivery time, and so on, and so on, and so forth. You know the, the supplier, and of course, we also have the speeds and feeds for that component. And here, kind of an interesting side note: we have an integration into the Coro Plus uh, web page, which you might know. So by just clicking on this button, it would transfer me to the Coroman web page. We can enter the our job. So what do we want to do? We want to machine a certain material in a certain way, and we will get the recommended speeds and feeds for that com uh, for that component for that operation. Um, yeah, let's have a quick look. Actually, how does it looks like? So this is how we manage the speeds and feeds on an item level. You will see later, we also manage the same thing on a assembly level. Uh, we'll just wanna click through it real quick because it's not, not that exciting, just to show you how it works. And I actually have to flip the switch to screen here real quick. So uh, here we go, imported. Uh, and you can see these are the, this is the information available. So, 
as I mentioned earlier, it's a, it's a, it's a, everything is based on a on a database. So of course, I can also check is this assembly, uh, sorry, is this component used in a tool assembly, for example. So I just click on a button, and the system shows me, aha, uh -huh, this component is actually used in one tool assembly. So let's have a closer look. Which assembly is it used in? Ah, okay, it's the face mill cutter. So now what I can do, I just click on it and I will be automatically transferred to kind of the next level, to the tool assembly level, and it will show me the tool, is, the tool assembly in which this component is used. And this is already the next level, tool assembly. You can see the same thing. We have all the parameters. Uh, we would have a stock location if there were one. We have the build of material. What is this assembly built out of? You can see this is the component from you just saw, uh, an insert, a holder. And of course, now we have also speeds and feeds here. And these are now the speeds and feeds based speeds and feeds based on the assembly level. So this is uh, these are the recommended speeds and feeds for for the tool assembly. And these are the speeds and feeds which will then be imported into the CAM system to do your programming. So now you say this is super easy because you already had this assembly in your database. What happens if you have to create this assembly from scratch? Easy enough. What we have, we have a 3D assembly builder. So the only thing you have to do, you select your, the cutting part uh, of your tool because you know what you want to do, what operation, what you want to do. So what I'm going to select now, because it's uh, usually a little bit trickier to do that, I'm going to select the turning pool for a turning operation. Um, and let's use, yeah, let's just use the bar here. It's a little bit easier. Yeah, Just select the cutting part. And now the only thing I have to do, I have to click on this little plus button at the end, and then the system automatically suggests me components which fit together. So for this bar, I have an option of four different holders. Let's just use that one. Clicking on it, the system automatically assembles the tool. So now the only thing I, I might want to do is enter the right uh, diameter I, I want to wanna have for this uh, for this tool, and I am Oh, can you see the window? Yeah, you can see it. And I, I'm done, basically. That's how easy it is to create a tool assembly from scratch. It took me a couple seconds. If you want to do this in a CAD system, it can take you forever. And now even better, if you save this uh, component, which I'm not going to do, the system in the background generates all the parameter necessary for different uh, systems. And we're talking about CAM systems today. So what the system does in background, it uh, creates the parameters for different CAM systems. So we have a bunch of uh, CAM interfaces installed on that demo. So for Esprit, what the system did, it created those parameters, and of course, the speeds and feeds. And 3D graphics in Esprit, they look like that. You need a step file for the entire uh, assembly, you need a DXF for the entire assembly, and you need a DXF for the cutting part. So this is what the system automatically generated in the background for Esprit. For Top Solid, I kind of like the comparison because it looks so different. For Top Solid, it looks completely different. This is these are the parameters, and if you look at the 3D graphics, it is completely different. Top Solid needs uh, one, two, three, four, five different uh, step files in order to to really work with the with the data. So what I'm trying to say is, you create the tool once, and TDM generates the parameters. The um, the models for all the systems connected to the system. So I did it once, and now it's available for Esprit, Hypermill, NX, Top Solid, Vericut, and so on and so forth. And now you can go in your CAM system, you get the assembly, you do your programming, and you are good to go. And I mentioned earlier, there's a, a like kind of a validation or compliance checker. So what we do is we have a little tool which has a look at the data in the system and make sure that you that the data is good enough for the different systems. And it even recommends you optional parameters. So for example, for this, uh, if you want to use this assembly in Esprit, we could add a node or an operation or a T number. If you want to add it in, in if you want to use it in an X, we could add uh, uh, the maximum cutting width, a tool number, and, and a holder radius. So there are a lot of features in there to make sure you can set up the data easily, fast, and good. And of course, we make sure that it can be consumed or used in different systems. So, and then the then you do your programming, and I will show you in a second how that works. And the output of the programming then will be the so-called tool list. So you're done with programming, you save the tool list, and the tool list will be automatically populated or generated in TDM. And this is just an example for for a tool list. Um, a nice picture actually of the of the of the fixture. Um, you have all your assemblies. Every assembly has a bill of material. Every component has a stock location, a quantity, 
and so on and so forth. And of course, you can also manage your inspection equipment like gauges and your fixtures. So when you're done with your programming, you save your, your, your job and everything you need downstream on the shop floor will be uh, created automatically. So, and that's basically all I wanted to say about a show in life in a software. Just maybe one more thing. We collect a lot of data, so we can, of course, visualize the data. There's a there's a nice dashboard where you can actually see what's going on, what kind of orders are on the shop floor, what are the most used tool items, most used assemblies, which can be really helpful information, even in the planning stage. So, now let's go back to the presentation. Here we go. Yeah, and I know this was uh, maybe a lot of information in a, in, a, in a very, very short period of time. Usually this live presentation can last between 30 minutes and an hour um, plus questions. So it was fast, I know. So let's recap real quick. Let's summarize in a nutshell. T tool management is about having the right tool, right time, right place, right quality, right data. And the typical tool management system manages the items with all its parameters. The items are then used in tool assemblies, which are then used in the, the, the CAM software. And of course, the CAM software creates the job sheet. Um, and this is the output of your CAM system. And you have your job sheet with all the assemblies um, in, in the tool management system. And the result is, of course, the transparency, the quality improvements, which saves you cost and time. And I mean, the, the benefits of a tool management system would be a webinar on its own. But I just want to run a couple uh, numbers with, with you at, at this point. Uh, an example from, 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 from our customers, they were able, but just by introducing a tool management system, cutting their, their tool assemblies by half. So they had 6,000 tool assemblies when they started, introduced a tool management system, they were able to cut that down uh, to 3,000, which saved them, as you can see, a lot of money. Or you uh, increase your, your uptime or reduce your downtime. An example, 350 hours per year, less scrap, almost 50%. And of course, increase your, your tool usage because you have fewer tools and you can uh, utilize them, of course, more, more often or more frequently. And then, of course, uh, a typical CAM integration. How does that look like? As discussed, you have your, your tool assembly in, in, in TDM with all the necessary information, speeds, feeds, parameters, graphics, ready for, for the different CAM systems. You grab that assembly from your, from your CAM system. You get all the data into your CAM system, you do your programming, you save your job, your tool sheet, and uh, the, the data is automatically populated in TDM system. And of course, the beauty of it is it's not only created for one CAM system or in a neutral data format. No, it's created for all the, the CAM systems you have interfaces for in TDM. And again, not just CAM systems, also simulation. So a typical example is you have a CAM system, an X, Master CAM Esprit, plus another simulation system like Vericard or NCC mode. You do it once and you have everything uh, right there with one click of the mouse. Okay, I wanna close the, the, the presentation part of this webinar with a quote um, yeah, from one of our customers, which I think fits perfectly to today's webinar. I mean, what they were saying, now we have, we spent more time preparing the revenue producing jobs, as preparing the jobs, and we spend so much less time searching for information. So in the end of the day, tool management increased their bandwidth by having or spending less time on searching for stuff. And I think this is exactly what, what tool management is all about. And with that, I'm, I am done with today's webinar. Um, and again, as I mentioned, I will stay online a couple more minutes, five, 10 minutes for your questions and I will ask, answer them very happily. At this point, I also want to thank you for your yeah, participation. It was, again, a pleasure. And funny enough, the sun comes out as we speak. <laughs> it's going to be a nice evening here. And it was really, it was, it was a pleasure. And I really hope to see you yeah, in one of the upcoming webinars, as you can see. And I really, really hope to visit some of you in the near future and discuss tool management live and in person. So, and now it's time for your questions. Let's, let me have a quick look. Um, switch the screen again real quick. One of the questions is, is it, yeah, the question is basically, is the, is the interface 
bidirectional. Also if you also you have a tool in TDM, you modify it in 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 a CAM system, and can you send the data back into uh, TDM? The answer is relatively clear, yes and no, which you hate. I know you hate this answer. There are some ways to feed data back from the CAM system to TDM as a tool data back from the CAM system to the to TDM, but it's a it's a it's a tricky thing, and we do not recommend it. Usually, what we say is the the master data is in the tool data management system. If you want to change an assembly or if you want to change a component, do it in a tool data management system. The CAM system only consumes the data. Um, because now we're back to the, the thing. If you do it in TDM, data will be automatically generated for different systems. So if you if you modify something in, 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 a, in a CAM system, you send it back to TDM. And if multiple programmers would do that, um, there is a, a chance for error. And to be fair, it doesn't really, it also just this bidirectional does not necessarily work with all um, CAM interfaces. What is kind of bidirectional? Um, we send assemblies to the CAM system and the CAM system sends the jobs back to, back to TDM. Uh, but the second part of that question is, will these, these changes be pushed down to VeriCut too? So you have your CAM programming, and you have your simulation. And the typical process is you set up your components, your assemblies in TDM, you um, you go into your CAM system, you pull the, the assembly, you do your programming, you, you send it back to, to TDM, and then uh, you grab basically a job in VeriCut, and uh, you do your simulation. And then you send the job basically back to TDM, and you have everything simulated and tested. So there are certain things you can change in a CAM program. So for example, you use different speeds and feeds, things like that you can change in, in, in a CAM system and then kind of push it back. But if you would completely change a tool assembly, like um, use a different extension, that's not a good idea. Let's let's put it that way. Um, I, it was a little bit a long answer, so sorry if it wasn't 100% clear, but uh, feel free also to send me an email and I can actually elaborate on that. So another question, we use NX. How does the cutting data for the tool get applied to the manufacturing? How does the cutting data for a tool get applied to the manufacturing operation? Um, in the end of the day, you're doing this actually in the CAM system. So you, 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 you start, you want to, do, you create your CAM program in, in Esprit, MasterCAM, whatever, with the different operations. And then you select your the, 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 the tool from TDM. And in the selection process, you can select certain parameters. So in the end of the day, when you talk, as I think, I hope I got you right, when you talk about um, cutting data, uh, we're talking about speeds, feeds, and things like that for a different operation. So by selecting the tool, you can also select um, the, 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 if you have different parameters, you can select from different parameters. There are some interfaces, and now it's, this is a thin ice for me because top of my head, I don't know, I would have to look it up. Some interfaces uh, support a, a, an, an automatic select of certain parameters. So by just choosing the operation in the CAM system, um, it will, would select the right, the right, um, the right data. Uh, is it working well with GibbsCAM? It works with GibbsCAM. Um, and we have we have documentation on 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 which as it works with the Gibbs cam. Short answer. Um, with every cam system, what I recommend we have a, a, a data sheet which tool types are supported and especially what is not supported. And I would have to look it up for Gibbs cam. I can do that. <laughs> Please shoot me a quick email. <laughs> and is it, this is actually it's a very very good question. Um, a cam in, as a the CAM interface has to cover your needs. And there are a lot of systems out there with CAM integrations. And all of a sudden you're using a, a, a tool which is not supported and all of a sudden the, the entire tool management process doesn't work for you anymore. So really we're talking about uh, different operations, drilling, milling, turning. And this is what a, what a, what a let's say a state of the art um, tool management systems should support. And then without, within those different operations, 
for example, turning, there are also different kinds of turning. I mean, and and you want to make sure that the, that the system you choose supports kind of, first of all, your CAM system and all the, let's say, different tool types, um, operation types you're using. So let me do this real quick. Ooh. And now regarding Gibscam, if you want, shoot me a quick email. Uh, first name, last name, robert.hour at tmsystems.com, and I can send you a little bit more specification on that. So, and now let's double check. It's a little bit to get an overview here. Yeah, and hi, Piotr. Good to see you. Yeah, not really see you, but nice that you're here. <laughs> Good to hear from you again. Very good. Um, yeah, I think I was able to answer most of your questions. Uh, the answer was more or less complicated. <laughs> um, again, feel free. There are many ways to to, to check out what we do, how, how it works. Uh, we have our YouTube channel. There are actually nice um, cam integration videos on there. We have our web page. And really, really be, please be, feel free to, to contact me, to contact TDM. We're more than happy to discuss everything a little bit more into detail, because especially when it comes to, to cam integrations, um, there's a lot uh, one can talk about, from cam system to supported uh, tool types. This is and how to, to create data in, in the system. That's a topic which is super interesting, super exciting. Uh, and we're more than happy to talk with you about that. And thank you very much again. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time and hope to see you soon or to, to talk to you soon in a webinar and hope to see you soon live in the near future. Thank you very much.